Coming up on 2020 on ID. American Sniper, a blockbuster at the box office. I'm ready to come home, baby. About a real-life American hero, Chris Kyle. He survived the most dangerous war zones, only to be killed on home soil at the hands of a fellow veteran. And somebody would shoot them in the back. He didn't have any chance. Now, the hero we didn't know. The sniper's wife, the American wife. Taya Kyle, reluctantly drawn into the spotlight. It's like my life lately has been the volume turned up all the way. I'm here. Your family is here. Your children have no father. You have to serve my country. Behind the public persona, Taya invites Robin Roberts into her very private world. We always felt like it was one of the best ladies on earth, honestly. It's so serene. It is. On an emotional drive into the North Texas Hill Country, winding over creek beds through prairies of blooming blue bonnets, miles of range bounded by barbed wire. A journey back to the darkest days in her love story with her husband. And it's horrible what happened, period, but in such a beautiful, peaceful area. And to the scene of the crime that shocked America, the gun range where Chris Kyle lost his life. As a way of comforting myself, in some ways, I just thought, well, at least it was maybe peaceful and you didn't see it coming. A brave Taya Kyle about to confront the ghost of an unimaginable loss. You ready to do this? Good. A story of love, war, and renewal. Welcome to 2020 on ID. I'm John Quinones. Millions are familiar with the story of Chris Kyle, the Navy SEAL who struggled to balance a fierce commitment to comrades in Iraq with his duties as a family man at home. But no one knows that story better than Taya Kyle, the wife who fought her own battle to hold their marriage together only to see her happiness shattered when Chris was murdered by another veteran of the Iraq War. Taya wrote an unflinching account of their marriage in her book, American Wife. And in 2015, she shared her story with Robin Roberts, from intimate family moments to the place where her husband lost his life to her commitment to keeping Chris's legacy alive. It is a story of unbreakable love. This is American sniper Chris Kyle, as you've never seen him. Not in a Hollywood movie, but in a home movie. One of many, his wife, Taya Kyle, is sharing exclusively tonight with 2020. You may not like everything, but it's for a reason. Faith is very important to Chris, too. Yes. The blessing of a new child. It seems like these that inspired Taya to write her book, American Wife, where she tells her story of love and loss with Chris. There was so much more to him. It was my chance to share some of that side, too, because I think he, um, I think he's earned it. For Taya, Chris was her unlikely soulmate, her cowboy in shining armor. He just had this softness and this tenderness. I continue to look back and be in awe of how he managed it all so well, honestly. When you open the book, four words jump out. Love, war, faith, renewal. Mm -hmm. Why those four words? Love certainly is always a key thing for me. It always has been. It probably always will be. And, I mean, it, was, it brought the greatest pain in our marriage, but it also brought greater strength. It's been a lifelong journey, but definitely it was more clear in my time with Chris how I had to rely on my faith. And then, you know, renewal is a, it's a constant process, you know. Four words for powerful forces shaping their lives from the earliest years. Born in Texas, Chris drifts from job to job as a ranch hand and professional rodeo competitor. He finally finds purpose in the Navy SEALs. During the grueling training program, he befriends fellow Navy SEAL Marcus Luttrell, famous in his own right as the subject of the film Lone Survivor. The Mikey and Danny really did. People die all the time in our training, not not, even, not even done with combat, I'm just talking about training and blood and sweat every day. Chris not only survives, he thrives, showing immense talent as a sharpshooter, earning his SEAL trident. He's stationed in Southern California, where, as the movie shows, he meets Taya. She's working as a pharmaceutical sales rep, and as she says in her book, 
depressed after a series of bad relationships and an unsure future, praying for a man with a good heart. You know, I wanted to be really independent, um, even though I knew I kind of needed somebody. Her prayers would be answered during a night out at a bar of all places. Hello, <laughs> nice to meet you. What's your name? Taya. The chance meeting between Taya and Chris started off on a pretty rocky note, as seen in the film American Sniper. Okay, how true was that first meeting? So true. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I drank a little too much, and he held my hair back while I, you know, let it all back out. But um, great first impression. Yeah, Taya. right. I know it's such a gentle, tender exchange, and I feel like that was so incredibly true mm -hmm. with. Chris, and that was what was so intriguing. Um, so yeah, it's, and it was funny. So, not exactly love at first sight, or was it? We're in a bar, you know, and he was so uh, genuine and, and had a depth to him in this really hot body with a cute face. When he told you what it was that he does for a living, I believe you said you didn't want to marry a seal. Right. Where are you going? Well, I was just going to go home because you said you wanted to see us. So. Said I'd never marry one. My faith is different now because I think God has a plan. You can really try hard to, to think you know what's going to happen, but I don't think any of us do. And no, it wasn't my plan, but I'm so glad I did. So when did you know in your heart that he was the one? It was just little by little. He was so nice. Really, I mean, just so nice and... and Supportive. He made me feel like he was excited to, to talk to me, to see me, and it was just this simple, fun, deep person. On March 16, 2002, Chris and Taya wed on a sunny California day, exchanging inscribed wedding bands. Taya wrote on Chris's ring, My Life, My Love, and he wrote, All of Me, on her ring. But from day one, Chris is torn between love for his country and love for his family. They have to cut their honeymoon short because Chris is called up for duty. Marcus Luttrell's wife, Melanie, is a dear family friend. And they loved each other passionately. I think there was a lot of sometimes ups and downs through different events, but they're going to stay strong together afterwards. The struggle between family and military service would continue to test their marriage. But when he is home, Chris is committed to their growing family, a son who Chris immediately nicknamed Bubba. Give me a hug. And a daughter nicknamed Angel. That commitment, undeniable. It's these stolen moments that Taya treasures most. What kind of father was he? Amazing. Truly, I don't, I truly don't think there's a better example of what a father should be than him. I can barely think of a day, you know, there may have been less than 10 in our whole lives that I remember him not laughing with those kids no matter what kind of day he had. And then he held them to the high standard. You know, he expected them to look him in his eye and be polite and have good manners and do what they're told. And then he cuddled them, you know, he just, he was always available for hugs and, you know, big hugs and, and a lot of love. Here's a perfect day shot by Taya. Chris roughhousing, Navy SEAL style with Bubba, who can't get enough. And a game they called Poke the Bear, which inspired the filmmakers. Let the beast run like that. <laughs> Taya's camera captures more than the fun times. She also records poignant, reflective moments like this. Listen closely as Chris talks to his son Bubba the night before his third deployment. Come here, Bubba. We'll read two more and then you can go to bed. It's just a lighter. When I'm gone, you can look at the tape. I know when he said, when I'm gone, he was referring to deployment. But he is gone. Mm -hmm. And this can be played. What are your emotions and your children when you, when you see this? I know that there was a part of him that also was referring to 
being gone for good. And that was always a possibility. When it, when it came down to would he be okay with dying on the battlefield, absolutely. But I think in the moments where you're holding your kid and thinking about not being there with them, that's when the pain, you know, comes in. And there was plenty of pain for Chris and for Taya. When we come back, trouble in the marriage. I remember crying to him and saying, I don't want to tell you this because what if this is the last time that we talk? I don't want to tell you this because I don't want you to worry about it. And what the home movies would reveal about a family in crisis. What's this you're going to bring for you? Sickness, <laughs> misery, <laughs> bankruptcy. Stay with us. Despite having doubts about ever marrying a Navy SEAL, Taya Kyle fell hard for her husband, Chris. Still, as they built their life together, the couple would find the war Chris was fighting half a world away had devastating repercussions much closer to home. Once again, here's Robin Roberts. Another day in this massive invasion of Iraq. In the fog of war, a sniper must make split-second life and death decisions. Who is friend? And who is foe? Here's the, the eye in the sky, the hand of God. I mean, that kind of deal. Watch our backs. He did it well. Took pride in the job. Loved his brothers. But as we saw an American sniper, playing judge, jury, and executioner weighs heavy on the heart, even for the man they called the legend. Yeah, she's got a grenade. She's got an RKG rushing <laughs> hand to the kid. You prepare for war to fight other men. But, you know, when you look at his experience, women and children, women putting their children in harm's way, no. I can't imagine having to deal with that and see that. I mean, it's painful just to think about. But then there are those, especially when the movie came out, mm -hmm. there was some criticism in saying, is that truly being a sniper? Mm -hmm. Is that truly being a hero? How mm -hmm. did you handle that? There are a number of things that I learned from Chris's life, and I remember one of them when he was going off to deployment and there were protesters on the side of the street. Mm -hmm. And I kind of looked at him and said, are you okay? And he said, that's why we fight. You know, give them the right to stay with their peace. I thought, wow, that's, that's pretty big, you know, to say that. So, um, yeah, there are critics, and that's okay. You know, they have a right to criticize it, and they have a right to examine it. To keep hold of his humanity, Chris keeps in touch with his wife. Taya says he never lost his softer side. It came out in his emails. He thought you were sexy. I know. Oh, I, know. I love how he would end. Yeah. Hey, sexy. And yeah. just what was that, you know, to, to, to read that again and to know that yeah. he made you feel that way and that he thought that way yeah. of you. That's one thing any person can do in their relationship is remind the other person that they find them attractive mm -hmm. and, you know, beautiful in their worst moments. And he, he did that. But emails alone aren't enough to keep a marriage healthy. Chris chooses to re-enlist that means he will spend more time in Iraq with his band of brothers than at home with his family. This video is taken shortly after Angel is born. The moment is so touching, but also bittersweet. As Taya holds her infant, Chris is preparing to ship out for the fourth time. And you were angry at him yeah. that he went back, back yeah. weren't you? Yeah, I was. Simultaneously angry and thinking, like, I love him so much, but you also know how are you supposed to be mad at somebody who's serving their country and putting their life on the line every day? Taya, juggling two children and the constant anxiety of a wartime military spouse, is nearing her breaking point. I remember crying to him and saying, I don't want to tell you this. I don't want to tell you this because what if this is the last time that we talk? I don't want to tell you this because I don't want you to worry about it. Screenwriter Jason Hall got close to Chris and Taya while writing the movie American Sniper. I think the challenging part for her was, why is he choosing this over, over me and over us? By the end of Chris's fourth tour, Taya is no longer willing to share her husband with Uncle Sam. You kind of put your foot down and mm -hmm. saying, it's either us or right. the SEALs. It wasn't just for me and it wasn't just for the kids. This is a guy who would go until there was nothing left. And I felt like he was kind of on the precipice of not having much left. Finally, after 1,000 days in Iraq, Chris is home for good. The kids are happy to have Dad back, and so is Taya. Daddy's being super dad. He's putting together your Rip Rider, and you just got it. But this video doesn't tell the whole story. 
Chris is struggling to return to civilian life, a mission as tough as any he's faced. In what ways did it change Chris, did war change Chris? He had the sleepless nights, he had the high blood pressure, he had, you know, the horrible dreams. He moves his family to Texas and starts a security business, but money is short and the Kyles are facing bankruptcy. In this video, he can't hide his despair. So, what's this year gonna bring for you? Sickness. Sickness, <laughs> misery, <laughs> bankruptcy. <laughs> money problems aside, Chris is suffering from PTSD and shutting out Taya, even texting an ex-girlfriend. You were so brutally honest about the toll that it took mm -hmm. on the marriage mm -hmm. and kind of danced around the ex-girlfriend. Mm -hmm. He never really came completely open and saying, was he unfaithful or mm -hmm. was he not? How close did you all come to not making it as a couple? You know, we came really close a number of times. Chris couldn't tell Taya about everything, but he could write down his war experience with the same unflinching accuracy he'd used to aim his sniper's rifle. There was a part of him that had to just throw his crap on the table and, and stand and be accountable for it and hide from it. The unexpected blessing of Chris's book, The American Sniper, was all the people at the book signings and, and after his death who have said that they felt so blessed to have that perspective because they could relate to it. And it wasn't all military families either. I mean, there were athletes who could relate to it and spouses who could relate to it. The book is a bestseller. Hollywood comes calling. Clint Eastwood signs on to direct Bradley Cooper in the movie version. Cooper knows it's not going to be easy to fill Chris Kyle's size 14 boots. Everything you could possibly want a job to be, something that scares the hell out of you, um, something that brings you to a different place, but in the end changed my life, quite frankly. Bradley got to know Chris so well that he improvised by putting the teddy bear on his shoulders. How about kids? You want kids? Yeah, someday. And that, that just goes to show how much Bradley really got in the heart and mind of Chris. You like country music? Only when I'm depressed. And what about seeing herself on the big screen, played by Sienna Miller? And did you feel that Sienna was able to portray you the way you wanted to be portrayed? I spend a lot of time not talking about that because it's me and I'm more interested in talking about, you know, Chris or the military, this and that. But I thought it's almost ironic because the military wives often get ignored. And here I'm doing the same thing to her performance because I think she did a phenomenal job. I mean, not only did she do a great job with the accent, but, man, when she was crying on film... I don't think we'll be here when you get back. It was making me hurt. American Sniper hits a bullseye at the box office, making over $300 million in the U.S., over $500 million worldwide, and receiving six Oscar nominations. The love story of Chris and Taya Kyle seemed destined for a Hollywood ending. But when I meet Taya for the first time on the Oscars red carpet, Chris is already gone. What do you think, though, he would think? All the nominations, best picture, 300 million at the box office. I know. Uh, you know what? He would be absolutely blown away, and he would be his usual happening for couples who are healing with this, this movie. When we come back, the story of what happens after the movie's ominous fade to black. Now, my brother just came by here. He told me that he's committed a murder. And Tay and I make that emotional visit to the place where she lost her husband. And I just needed to be with him, you know? I just wanted to be with him. Stay with us. The moment has arrived. Taya Kyle is finally ready to return with us to the place where Chris was taken from her. When you return here, is it, is it hollow ground? Is it haunted ground? Is it... I don't know. It's something uh, that's confusing. Yeah. And it's almost unthinkable like, that somebody would do that right here. Standing here, Taya is brought back to the day everything changed. February 2nd, 2013. We just had our normal routine, you know, kids sports. It's nearly three years after Chris left Iraq and his war is finally over. 
Now a best-selling author, he not only has the means to support his family, he has conquered his demons. Here is the family, happy on vacation at the Grand Canyon. Home at last, in body and mind. He has even begun helping fellow vets adjust to civilian life, bringing them to shooting ranges like this to relax and open up. You can still make a difference in this, in this nation by the things that you do in your day-to-day -day life. One life that needed saving, Eddie Ray Ralph, a Marine who served in Iraq and in Haiti after the deadly earthquakes. When he got home, his life spun out of control. Violent episodes, even threats of suicide. Ralph's mother reached out to Chris for help. And even though Chris had never met Ralph, he agrees. Chris was going to go do something charitable and kind and something he really didn't have time for. He's one of those guys that made time. That brisk February morning, Chris asked his best friend, Chad Littlefield, to come with him and Ralph here to the Rough Creek Lodge gun range, a hunting resort about two hours southwest of Dallas. But when Chris and Chad pick up Ralph in Chris's big black truck around one in the afternoon, Ralph is wary and the feeling is mutual. The strange man in the back seat set off alarm bells for Chad and Chris. While driving, Chris texts Chad, this dude is straight up nuts. Chad responds, he's right behind me, watch my six. Military slang for watch my back. Still, when they arrive at the range, Chris goes ahead with the day's plan. Chris was definitely in the front and Chad was um, behind. And I know that he had just shot some old west kind of replica guns and both of them were empty. Ralph waits until Chris has fired all his shots down range and guns down Chad. Then, before Chris knows what's happening, Ralph shoots him six times, all in the back. I know that Chad and Chris both had their sidearms holstered and on safety. The shooter, I think, was over there. And um, he definitely had some, some loaded weapons that he turned on him quickly, uh, if not simultaneously. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've ever been able to pinpoint if he had two, exactly. If he had two guns, it no could have been. I know they didn't, neither one of them thought coming. The man who survived a thousand days of war and made it home has been killed by a fellow veteran. Dying's one thing. Everybody dies, but you shot him in the back, man. You're a coward. Ralph takes Chris's gun and his truck and heads to his sister's house, telling her he just killed two men. The second he leaves, she calls 911. Listen, my brother just came by here. He told me that he's committed a murder. Taya hears the news from Mark Tribley, a family friend on the local police force. I immediately left the police station, went to his house. Taya immediately knew something was wrong. And I told her that it was confirmed that Chris had been murdered. I just looked at him. I remember looking in his eyes so intently and just saying, like, are you sure? because I've had these scares before where I thought he was dead and he wasn't. And he said yes. I just remember thinking, there's no way you're wrong. Like, there has to be. He was a survivor and a fighter, and, you know, and honestly, I didn't know how many times he'd been shot or that somebody would shoot them in the back. He didn't have any chance, and I think that was part of it, is he was so capable. And he'd been in so many close calls that it didn't seem real. For so long, she had to worry when Chris was overseas. But once he came home, that put him in the clear. She didn't ever have to worry about that again. She thought she was going to have him for the rest of her life. And then all of a sudden, on a normal Saturday, she gets a knock at the door. And that, that immediately changed her life. When they came to the funeral home, I just said, I need to see him. Like, the minute he gets in, and, and I know they wanted to clean him up and all that stuff. And I... I I just couldn't have been more emphatic. And, um, and on the way there, one thing that I remember asking the guy who went with me, a friend of ours, be, I just asked him, I said, are his hands okay? And um, I said, it's fine if they're not, I just want to be prepared. And he said, no, I think they're okay. And I just wanted to hold his hand, you know? And even if it had been shot up, I still was going to hold his hand. But I just wanted to know before I went in. And people were concerned, you know, like, are you going to be okay going in? And I said, yeah, going in isn't going to be the problem. You know, getting me out of there is going to be the problem. And it turned out it was. That was the hardest part. How were you able to tell your children about what happened to Chris? It was 
one of the, the hardest things I've ever had to do. And I remember thinking, you know, maybe I'll take them outside so they don't have the memory of getting this news in the house. I just told them something really bad had happened and that daddy got hurt. And my daughter looked at me and she said, is he dead? And then I just, you know, shook my head and then just the sound from her chest and her stomach, that guttural cry came from is, she was thinking that couldn't possibly be true. It's mm -hmm. very hard to understand. They had the same questions we all have. Why would he do that? Mm -hmm. You know, why would somebody do that to daddy? Police tracked down Chris's truck within hours. This video shows police ordering Ralph to exit. Eddie! Eddie! Turn it off, Eddie! Then, unexpectedly, Ralph takes off, leading police on a high-speed chase through residential neighborhoods. At one point, police ram the truck. Eventually, Ralph surrenders. He is arrested and charged with the first-degree murder of Chris Kyle and Chad Littlefield. Nine days later, a rainy, gray day in Dallas. Thousands file into AT&T Stadium, home of Chris's beloved Dallas Cowboys, to pay their respects to a fallen American hero. I stand before you, a broken woman, but I am now and always will be the wife of a man who is a warrior both on and off the battlefield. Chris Kyle's funeral procession to the Texas State Cemetery, providing the movie's poignant final moments. The pictures taken from real life, like these unforgettable images captured by ABC stations, KVUE, and WFAA. The drive to Austin to the cemetery. It was 200 miles of people lined in the streets and on every overpass. And bagpipers and people stopped on the other side of the freeway. I mean, it was that feeling of patriotism and acceptance, and that goes right in line with Chris's life. Taya still has mixed feelings about this place, where her husband spent so much time. For him to lose his life in that manner has to just, he must look to the heaven, are you kidding me? Yeah. I mean, he didn't even have a bullet. Right. And it's gone. Right. Didn't and, even have a chance. Right. And I guess when I try to comfort myself, I think if God had gone to Chris and said, hey, if I can take your life, I'll inspire a lot of people. Are you willing? I feel like you probably would have said yes, you know? Mm -hmm. To be here where it actually happened because it makes me want to just pay my respects and say thank you to your husband. Really. Thank you. When we come back, Chris Kyle's accused killer gets his day in court. This matter is filed state of Texas versus Eddie Ray Ralph. His defense of insanity. The ones in the sky are the ones that fly, you know what I mean? And Taya's reaction. I wanted to come out of my seat like you don't have a right. Stay with us. In the dusty West Texas town of Stephenville, cowboy capital of the world, All rise. Taya Kyle comes to bear witness as the man who killed her husband is brought to justice. This matter styled State of Texas versus Eddie Ray Ralph. Two years later, Ralph looks very different. He's heavier and neatly dressed. What was it like being in that courtroom with him? You know, some of the pictures when it was autopsy type pictures and he'd be staring at them I wanted to come out of my seat like don't you dare look at them in that vulnerable state you don't have a right it's a challenge for Taya just to be here the two years since Chris was taken from her have been the darkest of her life and I know Taya, you you tried to remain as strong as you could mm -hmm. but you went down a deep hole mm -hmm. depression in some ways mm -hmm. and you beautifully wrote that were it not for the children, you'd want to be where Chris was. Did you contemplate suicide? No. No. You know, there's a... I have a lot of compassion for people who, um, who feel that way, but I also know without a doubt that the people left behind are never the same. They're never okay. 
a phrase kept running through her mind, I don't understand. I think everybody goes through things in their life where they're like, this does not make any sense, or I don't understand why this is happening, but that's part of the journey to faith, I think, is to say it's okay not to understand all of the reasons why, but to see how you can be better for it and what you can take away from it, how you can help others, because we all have something. Well, that's faith. Faith right. is, the, is not seeing, not knowing. Right. That's why it's called faith. Yes, yes. All right, Mr. Nash, you may call your first witness. The state calls Taya Collins. Taya will need every ounce of her faith to get through this trial. Who were you married to prior to February the 2nd, 2013? Chris Kyle. Okay. She introduces the American sniper few knew. The good son, the family man, celebrating their last Easter. I was outside our house on Easter morning. <laughs> Chris hiding Easter eggs for the kids. The state's case, crime scene photos, x-rays of fatal bullets, a recreation of the shooting. We got the shooter in position sitting right there. No doubt, Ralph did it. He didn't just want Chad dead. He wanted Chad dead. Dead, 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 dead. And he wanted the same report. Eddie Ray Ralph's defense. Psychosis, delusion, schizophrenia, he was crazy. Not guilty by reason of insanity. In and out of mental hospitals four times in the 18 months before the killings. Diagnosed with psychosis and PTSD. Even though he never saw combat. Doctors prescribed half a dozen or more medications. Your Honor, I offer State's Exhibit 331. He certainly seems to be acting strangely when police interview him the night he was arrested. The ones in the sky are the ones that fly, you know what I mean? The pigs <laughs> in the world. Schizophrenia. Dr. Mitchell Dunn says Ralph was schizophrenic with delusions of cannibals and strange creatures. You know what I mean? The pigs. <laughs> he began to think that both Mr. Collin and Mr. Littlefield were some type of pig assassins. He was acting in self-defense to kill them before they killed him. Rouse lawyers say veterans administration doctors should have kept him in the hospital. Did the VA fail here? You know, I think there are a lot of issues with the VA. I really do. In this situation, though, you know, this guy manipulated. Every time he got in trouble, he used some sort of excuse. But the prosecution says maybe Ralph just wanted to be the man who shot Chris Kyle. If you kill somebody known as the American sniper, it might make you feel important. Yes, that's possible. It is time for the jury heads on in their ears. This defendant gunned down two men in cold blood, shooting them in the back in our county. Find him guilty. Jurors deliberate together, pray together, and then decide. The way he carried out these murders and then in his actions afterwards. The reloading of the gun, the taking the truck. He ran from the police. He may have had some mental issues, but I don't think it rose to the level of that he didn't know what he was doing was wrong. I've been advised the jury has reached a verdict in this matter. Is this correct? Yes, sir. Mr. Ralph, you'll please stand. We, the jury, find the defendant, Eddie Ray Routh, guilty of the felony offense of capital murder as charged. The sentence is automatic, life without parole. When we come back, can Taya ever forgive? It's a struggle at times. Right. I mean, that he, he took something. And she considers the possibility of new love. But you even said, Taya, that you heard Chris saying he wants you to allow yourself to find another love. When we come back. This is your home. You're very private about it and rightfully so. It is springtime in Texas and Taya Kyle invites us to her new home. So are you at peace here? It is peaceful, and I feel like it's a, you know, a real blessing that I can wake up in the morning and, you know, you can hear the birds chirping and the trees. The trial seems far away, but her feelings about the man who took her husband's life are ever-present. 
Mm -hmm. I had a friend tell me, you know, showed in the Bible that there are stories where he forgives the person immediately, but there's still a consequence for their actions and sometimes it's long term. And I needed to hear that because I was thinking forgiveness meant it's okay. No, forgive yeah. the, and that's the thing. When you don't forgive, it's you're hurting yourself, giving that person that you're letting them off the hook. Right. No, you're not. Right. Taya may still struggle with forgiveness, but the hate is behind her. That's why God tells us not to hate, because the moments where I had just disdain, disgust, like any focus on that person, it hurt me. In this new season, time for a new purpose. Taya is committed to keeping her husband's legacy alive. Welcome to Lubbock, Texas. We travel with her to Lubbock, Texas, where she speaks with kids at Trinity Christian School. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm Taya. Nice Hi. to meet you. Hi. Hi, what's your name? Ezra. After taking care of unlaced sneakers, she takes questions. So are your kids saying when they hear their father is a hero? I think that they're, they know that all of our service members are heroes. And they also know that sometimes just having a mom and a dad who love you, that's really just as important. And maybe even a bigger reason to call somebody a hero. There's Q&A with some high school kids taking time for pictures with anyone who asked. Taya meets two young men who will soon be serving the country. Yeah. John Beck is headed to uh, West Point. Oh, West wow. Michigan. I feel like crying. I don't know why it's emotional, <laughs> but I, um, I wish the best for you guys and I'll be praying for you. Just don't lose yourself. Don't be afraid to talk about it if it gets hard, you know? 1,500 people come to see her for a fundraiser that night. There's no speech. She just tells her story. In my darkest hour, the littlest things made the difference. It was the people who didn't have the words, but just showed up to hold my hand or give me a hug. They auction off a rifle, an autographed copy of Taya's new book, and a hunting dog. 14-week-old female black lab. You know what her name is? Sniper. I've got a couple guys that know they're alive because of this. Thank you for telling me that. They raise $100,000 for the Chris Kyle Frog Foundation. The money will go to help take care of veterans and... Let's talk about the foundation. One of the key things, and it's important to me, is that it's for first responder families as well as veterans because he cared about them and they're fighting the battles on the home front but their marriages are taking a toll and they start strong these are strong people that are willing to take on that kind of lifestyle and they could use our help back home Taya takes me to see a special place on the property the stable it's kind of fitting with everything we've read about Chris he was a cowboy right, right. cowboys have horses right right his spirit is something that it's it's important to me to keep that alive for the kids and you know they've been robbed but I'm gonna do my part to try to help them know their dad through different experiences and um, horses might be one of them you know look at you looking good do you ever think you'd marry a cowboy no but it was exciting I never probably thought a cowboy would want me but <laughs> before we say goodbye Tay and I find time to go riding and I'll tell you right now neither one of us is getting on any wild horses the way Chris Kyle once did. What is it that you like about riding? Well, I love the fact that the animals have that. I feel like there's sort of a spiritual sense to them, and I like the uh, peace of it. I just think they're magnificent animals, you know? And there's no place like the back of a horse to give you a fresh perspective on what's around the bend. Which brings us to a story Taya tells those high school students about her son. When he said something to me about dating. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not interested. And he goes, okay, good. And I said, you want mama to die a lonely old shrew? And um, he goes, yeah. <laughs> I'll love you. I know no one can replace Chris, but I do hope that she finds love with someone. Taya writes in her book about a big decision. She says she took off her wedding ring and moved it to her right hand. So we were in for a bit of a surprise when we sat down to talk. I've been trying to look at things, the which, you know, because <laughs> yeah. you, uh -huh. you talked about switching hands uh -huh. with, yeah. with the ring. So, so but it's back it's, on the left. It's yeah. back on the <laughs> left. The wedding band is back on her left hand, right where Chris Kyle put it 13 years ago. So why is it back on the left? I knew it. I know, I just couldn't do it. I just, you know, I, I kept it on the right for quite a while. But you even said, Taya, that you heard Chris mm -hmm. saying 
He wants you to be able to allow yourself to find another love. I do believe it, and I can allow for that possibility that the love I have for Chris doesn't have to change. It's just not what I wanted, you know? Two steps forward, one step back. But she'll get there, with Chris still at his family's side. You wrote uh, and about how you and really your daughter, she talks to her daddy. Yeah. He talks to her. Yes. Yeah. It's so incredible and you know everybody can have their own beliefs on it and I feel like sometimes you have to experience something yourself to really buy into it but it's one of those things where it really doesn't matter I guess what anybody else thinks because she has a relationship there and my son does too in a different way and they'll find their way and it may ebb and flow but they will never ever have any doubt that they were loved and that they're still you know, being watched out for in some capacity by him, if it's through me or if it's by, by him. No matter what the future holds for Taya Kyle, she'll never forget, as her favorite Randy Travis song put it, the man who whispered her name. I heard a night bird call to its name. When I heard you whisper my name. You said that song mm, captures what Chris was all about. How so? It's just this quiet presence of somebody who knows you as somebody that saves you. And he did save me. I still heard you whisper my name. As of 2016, Taya Kyle says her time is spent primarily with her family. But she does continue to share her story of hope and perseverance through speaking engagements and her work with the Chris Kyle Frog Foundation. One event, she reports, raised more than half a million dollars. I'm John Quinones. Please join us next time for another edition of 2020 on ID.